a little analogy that I, I can draw from my days in football. You know, in training camp, training camp is a long, arduous process, six weeks in the NFL, and you're going head-to-head -head against your teammates, but you're not holding anything back. No, you're not, because you're getting them ready for the live bullets, and you want them to know that come game day, come game day, you're going to be wearing the same colors. And that was the experience that I went through as a primary candidate against this next gentleman. So it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium another guy who can sway the crowd and who will sway the crowd on November 4th, Mr. Blaine Lukemeyer. many times, and I'll say, we're going to skip the bio stuff tonight, and you know who my opponent is, lives here in your community and in your county, so you know her pretty well, so do we need to talk about her? No! No? Well, I just want to mention a couple things about her before we go on. Do you realize that uh, she was the poster person recently by the Wall Street Journal, an article they had a couple weeks ago for Democrats trying to run as Republicans? She was their main person. And if you watch her ads and watch what she's doing, she tries to flip, she tries to hide, she tries to do everything she can to make you realize or think that she is a conservative. I've had a number of people that uh, talked to me uh, the week that her first commercials came out and said, wow, this lady is really, seems like a really nice lady, and she is a nice lady. But her views do not represent the 9th Congressional District. And that's the point we have to make sure we get across to people that this individual is not somebody who's a good fit for the district. She doesn't represent the values and concerns of the people of this district. I've got a very broad background. I've got an agricultural background. I've got a business background. And in fact, for the last couple of weeks here with the financial crisis, one of my early jobs when I got out of college was as a bank examiner, as a bank auditor. So as a result, and I've been in the banking business the last 30 years while well, in the insurance business, so as a result, I use the stuff that they're going through is some of the very things that I have seen and experienced and worked with as an examiner back 30 years ago. So some of the crisis that we're, we're going through, I know whenever we, uh, uh, in 1995, whenever the banks were deregulated and Clinton started to push for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to start making some loans that were less uh, credible and less collateralized than what they had previously been, I told my brother, who actually manages our business, I said, you know what, we're headed for trouble. And sure enough, 12, 13 years later, here we are. So uh, it's kind of timely that we've got somebody like myself who understands these issues. I think we can connect and relate with lots of folks. In fact, during the course of the campaign, one day we were in the middle of a boardroom in a, in a meeting in the morning, standing in the middle of a bean field in the afternoon. There's not many candidates that can relate to, to folks like that, and I think that gives me a, the broad base of support it's going to take to be able to attract the, the, the people to our, to our team and continue to, to sway the voters that we're the guy that can represent their on a broad view of a uh, range of views. Uh, we've got uh, we've got the county coordinators now in every county. We're uh, working hard every day, raising money on the road, um, on the phones. Um, in fact, my ears started to get colorful. I believe it's just, it's uh, been a long, long campaign. But we're working hard. We're doing well. We like where we're at in the campaign. Uh, we're positioned to, to take the last three weeks here and go out the gate. Uh, with your help, we're going to be able to do that. You know, we've got some tough races ahead of us as well. Uh, at the top of the ticket, you know, uh, John McCain and Sarah Palin are. Our fantastic team, they're doing well. I think the pendulum that has swung the other side recently, I think it's going to come back our way shortly. I think as, uh, as the, the people start to look at what's going on in our country, they're going to want people who they can trust. People who have that judgment to make the difference. I know the other day I had the opportunity to talk to the group in O'Fallon, uh, at the mccain Palin rally, and uh, I made a comment that, uh, that John McCain has got the judgment and the experience and the character it takes to be our next leader. If you stop and think about it a little bit, what is judgment? The ability to make those decisions. What is judgment? It's experience that's tempered by character that gives you the ability to make judgments, make decisions that are going to make a difference in our lives. That man can do it. And what's his first decision? He made his first decision with his picking of his nominee of Sarah Palin. Was that a winner or what? our party 
way, she has energized this country, and we are going to take this out the gate as well. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, as we go during the campaign trail, there's a lot of folks talk about the Obama folks, and it's kind of interesting because the other day somebody mentioned to me, they said, you know, do you realize, Blaine, why Obama had to move his, his uh, acceptance speech to an outdoor theater instead of a arena where he's at? I said, no, why not? What would happen? I said, well, Joe Biden filled up the night before with all this hot air. So, <laughs> so uh, and I guess, you know, one thing that as a campaign was going on, one of the comments that he made really offended me. If you remember this, he said that people in rural, uh, rural parts of America are nothing but a bunch of bitter, gun-toting, Bible-thumping hillbillies. Yeah, that really offended me. I am not bitter. <laughs> Okay, how about this one? Uh, I guess you realize, too, that a lot of the hope and change that he preaches, he hopes you believe his rhetoric, so they change out of your pocket. You realize that. Don't you? But the one that really kind of is concerning is, um, he gets that 3 a.m. phone call, is he going to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you, it's above my pay rate? <laughs> that's concerning. That's concerning. And that's why John McCain is the guy we need to be supporting and make sure he gets in there. And Sarah Palin's going to be somebody that's going to be a great sidekick. I call her a dick teeny with a skirt because I think she's going to be somebody that's going to be a dynamite uh, attack dog that's going to be in there and make a difference for us. And I really, really think it's going to be a great ticket. Well, I appreciate everybody's uh, support and we're looking forward to the end of the race here. Uh, it's been an honor to, to be uh, your nominee. We have, I think, uh, done a great job of putting the campaign team together. And at the end of the day, as I say many times, this race isn't about me, it's about you. It's about who do you want to represent you in Washington, D.C., represent your values, your concerns, and that American spirit that made us the country that we are today. It's that American spirit that our founding fathers used to generate the interest and, and, and put the, together the Constitution of this country that has survived for over 230 years and will continue to drive us and drive us for the rest of the next millennium if we allow it to happen. And you, the people in this room, who represent those values that are making us great and will continue to make us great. And it will be my greatest honor to represent those values in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much for that opportunity.